Maybe the worst thing that could happen is that you didn't give yourself the chance to see if this could work. Business of Architecture, episode 284. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enix Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. Today's guest is Leah Baker, an architect who currently lives in Denver, Colorado. Leah reached out to me because she started an online service, Graphite, that pairs pre-selected and pre-vetted architects with clients who need architectural services. On today's episode, you'll discover how Leah started her entrepreneurial journey and what it has taken her to get to the point she's at, including how much money and time she spent launching this new entrepreneurial journey. You'll also discover her recommendation for you if you happen to be sitting currently on a big idea and you want to turn it into reality. If you haven't already, go to freearchitectgift.com and you'll be able to pick up a special video that I've prepared for podcast listeners like yourself. This video will show you how to double your architecture firm income in the next 12 months. Go to freearchitectgift.com, enter your best email address on that page, and you'll get instant access. With that, let's jump right in to today's conversation with Leah Baker. Hello, Leah, and welcome to the Business of Architecture podcast. Hey there, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So Leah, the reason why I wanted to get you on the podcast today is because you came out of the architecture industry. You're actually a licensed architect, is that correct? Yes. And you've transitioned and you've pivoted into entrepreneurship with this website, Graphite, that we're going to be talking about. Tell me, just to get started here, what is Graphite? So Graphite's a freelance platform for architects. So essentially what that means is we take clients that that need architects and match them uh, with freelancers and build remote teams for their project. When did you launch Graphite? In December of last year. So it's been going for about 18 months now. Is that fair to say? Uh, Sorry, no, just this past December. Um, So so it's been going for six months. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Great. And how many architects do you have on the platform as of this time? Right now we have about 15 um, and we're, we're always looking for more. So, Great. And then on a monthly basis, how many client inquiries do you get from prospects on a monthly basis right now? We probably get uh, between 10 and 15, I would say. And generally, where are those located? Uh, their projects. Where are the projects located? Yep. Uh, right now, mostly in San Francisco. That's kind of where we're piloting uh, and focusing right now. Gotcha. How do you market the platform to get those leads? Um, So a lot of different ways Um, through kind of traditional advertising, um, you know, Facebook ads, Google. I've had a lot of um, success with Craigslist actually Um, through some local listservs there in San Francisco with the, you know, the architecture community there. Um, Kind of still word of mouth as the, the industry is still kind of relying a lot on that. Um, and we're getting ready to do a launch event as well to, to really um, build partnerships. So we're reaching out to a lot of, you know, kind of adjacent partners for the architecture industry and getting the word out that way. So I would imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong, that it's a lot easier to find architects to join the platform than it is to actually find prospective homeowners who have projects. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Cause there's, I would say a lot more, you know, architects, either they're, you know, younger professionals working at a firm that, that need a little side work or, um, you know, people, people realizing that, that if the projects are there, that they, that they're ready to do the work. So, yeah. And also just because that's my background as well. Um, I have more connections in that space and know more people. So you're right on that. Great. And so from what you're telling me, I'm hearing that currently you're getting about 10 to 15 inquiries per month on through the Graphite platform. These are for people who actually have projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how many of those turn out to be legitimate where they actually end up going forward? Oh, good question. Um, I don't know if I have a percentage worked out, but a few, um, I would say like two or three. Um, so people are either, um, as typical inquiries go, they're either, maybe doing a little more research than they are actually ready to hire or, um, you know, something comes up or they, they choose somebody else. Um, so yeah, a variety of reasons. 
And what platform do you find to be the most effective for generating these project inquiries as of yet? You mentioned you're doing some Facebook, some print mm-hmm. advertising, it sounded like, some Google advertising. What have you found to be most effective? Right now, the most effective is kind of the word of mouth still and the um, sort of listservs in the communities that, that I'm involved in personally. Um, and I think that's, that's because that's kind of how the industry is going so far. And also just getting people aware that like nobody's really searching freelance architect um, on Google. Cause I don't think that's really coming up in their head. That's an option. So it's really getting the fact that we exist and it is an option for them. Um, you know, in front of them, that's kind of our challenge right now. And so we're constantly pursuing um, various options there. So define for me, what do you mean by freelance architect? Well, um, just anybody that's working and and wants to work on their own, um, not working at a firm. Great. So this might include sole practitioners that potentially even have an office. Yes, actually I have a couple of those. Um, And that's great too, because they, that comes with sort of usually a lot more experience and kind of um, background. And so we need that kind of range of skills depending on the project. So, yeah. Let's talk about the, so it looks like you have the platform built out here and you have some good marketing tools already in place. I can see that. Let's talk about what it takes to start an entrepreneurial adventure like this, Leah, both from the time aspect and also from the investment. Oh, absolutely. So... A lot of, um, I would say, mental work. (laughs) Um, I would say that it takes a lot of getting over your own drama and fears and doubt to really kind of pursue pursue your own entrepreneurial path. And that's something I'm I'm constantly always trying to work on. Um, And coming up, you know, because coming up with an idea is sort of one thing, but then executing is another and I think most entrepreneurs will agree with that statement and uh, as far as the financial aspect of it um, the way that I've kind of started graphite is you know I started it in San Francisco that was the you know startup land and and although I got inspired by that the common path there is to go raise venture capital right away Um, and that was, that was definitely a consideration for me. Um, but then when I realized, Hey, I can do this in more of a manual way, try to build up some funds, save some money there and, and then build it out, hire a developer to make this more robust, do more marketing, um, that I decided that was a better fit for me. And I would learn a lot along the way. I would learn what needed to be built before actually building it. Um, and so, it has been a little bit of an investment on my part, but it's been quite minimal, I would say, um, in comparison to a lot of startups. And, you know, we're, we're bringing in money already, so that's always good. <laughs> good. How, would, how much money did you have to have? Well, let's just say up until now, how much money have you had to invest in getting this project off? Not including your living expenses, but just investing in getting it off the ground. Yeah. So, I would say... Up to this point, it's probably been maybe between five and ten thousand. And then the so there's the five and ten thousand. However, there's the time and effort that you're not able to be out there making a living as an architect. Probably right. You're focused on graphite. How much living expenses have gone into that? Like if we look at the total investment so far to actually make this thing happen. Well, so let's see, that's been about, so for a while I was doing half time at my office. So I was um, in San Francisco and I was kind of, you know, so I was supplementing with that. Um, So I would say, um, but maybe around 15,000 in savings for, for supporting myself. Yeah. Good. And then you say that as of right now, you're bringing in money to the business how, how do you have a projection for when you think this thing's going to be break even or is it already a break even? Good question. It's uh, I'm glad I looked at my financials yesterday. <laughs> we do our invoicing uh, twice a month. So I was just looking at that yesterday. Um, I think next month actually we might be or, or even profitable. So that's exciting. <laughs> that could be very exciting. Yeah. Right. Profit is always nice. Now, 
I know one concern that architects have with these kind of crowd-based platforms is that it may lead to the commoditization of architectural services. How would you respond to an architect that says, well, I'm not, not sure I want to be in this kind of bidding game against other architects. How does that work on your platform? Yes, I've definitely got that question before or, or concern. So, and, and I come from that architect's perspective. So I certainly don't want to devalue our industry. Um, how we, when we bring on um, freelance architects um, onto the platform and they apply to be on the platform, we actually set what, what we believe in my research has been a fair rate. So we actually set the rate. Um, so it's not like, oh, I'm competing with this other guy or, or girl, um, that they're just cutting their rates just to get the job. So we're actually giving sort of a level playing field for everybody, and it's based on years of experience and if they're licensed or not. And that's kind of the baseline. And then once we see how they're performing on these projects and their client feedback, then they have the potential for their, their rate to grow. Um, so we're kind of, it's, it's, I really want it to be a sort of a way to use their skills and, and use their set of talents to the best of their ability and, um, and give that. And actually what I've found is the rates that we're, we're giving, we're actually about double typically what I would say the architects are, getting when they're taking home, uh, working at a firm. So, so for the architects on the platform right now, it's been a, a net positive. Yes. Yes. <laughs> to be involved. Great. Now let's, let's talk a bit about this journey of entrepreneurship, Leah. How did you decide to leave the architecture industry in, in terms of the professional practice and move into this entrepreneurial journey? What motivated you to do this? What's the story here? Yeah. So, um, like a, like a lot of us, um, you know, I was working in an architecture office. I mean, doing, doing great projects, great work, um, loved the, loved the office, loved the projects. Um, but for me, I felt like there was something more for me personally, um, but also more for our industry. And I kind of just started getting the feeling and in the sense, like our industry, has been quite antiquated or is quite antiquated and a little bit backwards to um, a lot of the, the, you know, the technologies we can utilize these days and a lot of how a lot of the other companies have, have started to run with, you know, virtual collaboration and all of these digital tools that are at our fingertips right now. Um, I don't really think that the architecture industry is utilizing that. Um, I was also doing a bit of freelance work um, on other platforms that were not meant for architecture services at all. <laughs> and it was a little painful. Um, and so I was seeing the projects on there. I was seeing that need. Um, and I was also, you know, feeling the pain on the architect side of, you know, maybe we're not making as much money as we want to be making, or we're not having this flexible lifestyle or like our, um, our tech industry counterparts, especially in Silicon Valley. Um, and I really didn't see a reason why um, firms in our industry could, could embrace that model. And so I wanted to kind of be the one to bring that to the world. Awesome. Well, it's one thing to have the idea, Lee. It's the other thing to actually take them, have the momentum to actually do it. What would you say gave you the courage and the wherewithal and just the the, the action taking mindset to get out there and actually make this thing happen? Oh, well, yeah, no, I totally agree. And it, it took time. Um, I certainly had the idea much before I made the leap. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, it's a lot of, of, of mental work. And um, I would say looking at it from the perspective of, well, you know, because I think, when we do have ideas, we have this fear of, well, what if it doesn't work? Or what if I fail? Um, and so it's, it's kind of like looking at it, well, what if that is the case? And what is the worst case scenario? And, you know, you may say, oh, well, I'll be out some money. Or I, you know, maybe I'm right back to where I started and I have to work at a firm. Or, but maybe, maybe the worst thing that could happen is that you didn't give yourself the chance 
to see if this could work. And so that's kind of really where I had to, to honor myself and just go for it. Awesome. What, what advice would you give to other architects, designers who maybe have an idea and they think that it would be big? I would say you just have to start taking action. I mean, it's, it's, it's so scary um, at points, but um, even if it doesn't turn out how you originally thought, you'll change so much as a, you know, a person, as a professional, and learning about business or anything. Um, you just have to go for it. And even if it's just little steps, starting to take action and learn um, the faster you can do that and learn each time, um, you know, the quicker you'll, you'll get somewhere. Now, it's one thing to be based on referrals and getting word of mouth to help grow the, the number of leads that are coming in through, drip, through, uh, through Graphite. How do you feel that your, what's your growth plan, Leah? How are you really going to unlock this and start to scale it? Are you looking at Facebook ads? What's, what's your plan here? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm really excited about our upcoming launch event and partnering um, with a lot of industry professionals to really boost this. And we're talking, you know, realtors, contractors, interior designers, kind of all of those adjacent professions um, using, you know, social media marketing kind of partners there. Um, I think that's going to really boost our exposure. Um, and with that, because I think, you know, as good as Facebook and, and Google ads can be, and I do think that is part of the plan, um, really throwing some more money there. Uh, I think that this, especially this business, goes a long way f with partnerships. And so if we can build the meaningful partnerships that really build in almost a referral system, um, I think that's really, that's really going to boost us. And especially those partners that have a large audience. So, so getting, um, you know, getting those large following, getting eyes and ears open to, Oh, here's graphite. And this is what they do. Um, I think it's going to be key, but uh, along with general social media and Google marketing too. So tell me specifically what would one of these partnerships look like? How does this work in reality to be able to grow the platform and get more leads for your architects? Yeah, absolutely. So for example, realtors, um, you know, I'm working with one right now, you know, a lot of times they're the first point of contact to our potential clients. So, you know, clients could, you know, they, they just bought a new house They're It's kind of a fixer upper. They couldn't afford, you know, especially in the Bay area, um, you know, people can't afford their dream home. So, um, it, a lot of times people are asking, okay, well, what architects, you know, should I use, do you know any to the realtor? And so they're the kind of the first point of contact. And so uh, we're working with them to number one, um, you know, pair up sort of a, a recommendation system kind of both ways, as well as doing sort of an open house series with them where we may do like a little rendering or a plan um, and put it up at open houses because a lot of, you know, clients, they can't visualize what these, spaces could potentially be and so in a way to help the realtor sell the house we can show this is what it could potentially be and oh by the way who did that rendering i'd like to connect with them to to develop that further um so that is that's sort of a realtor example um one this is sort of a social media um a partnering one you know sort of oh, if we're going to help out um a social media mogul or say like somebody that has, you know, a lot of followers or their, their audience is really, um, they're really into re redoing their homes and they're looking to, and they're always aspiring to have um, a nicer space, but they think that maybe uh, working with an architect isn't attainable or having this beautiful design isn't attainable. Um, working with, with them on a project maybe of their own, to say, oh, here's the process and having them post about it. Um, so things like that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, great, Leah. It's been fantastic you, having you so far here on the show. Anything else that you'd like to tell our listeners about the platform or how they can get involved? What's the next step? Absolutely, yeah. So our website is mygraphite.co. And like I said, we're always uh, looking to build our network of freelancers and happy to speak with anybody else that has any more questions. They can, they can reach me there and they can uh, apply to be on the platform as well. 
Great. Leah Baker, thank you for joining us here on the Business of Architecture. Thank you. See you later. And that is a wrap. As a podcast listener, I'd like to invite you to two free online educational seminars for firm owners. The first teaches you how to structure your firm to avoid the overwhelm and fires that plague so many firm owners. If you're ready to move from overwhelmed operator to excited owner, visit businessofarchitecture.com forward slash freedom webinar to access this free online training. The second seminar you can access shows you how to attract your ideal clients to your firm consistently day in and day out. Go to architectwebinar.com to access this training. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.